Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare a pork pie called pastero in the medieval text. A beautiful source, conventionally called Anonimo Veneziano, written around the end of the 13th century. We start with ingredients. We need pork collar, lard, flour, eggs, red wine vinegar, sugar, onion and ginger. We cut the pork collar into small pieces. The author does not specify which kind of cut to choose, just to use pork. There will be no further cooking fats for the filling of our pie, so we suggest using a cut quite fat, or if you want to use lean meat, add a bit of minced pork belly or cured pork fat back. In the latter case, don't use too much salt. The kind of pie we are preparing today is called pastero. Usually, in the other cookbooks, we find pastello or pastellum, but Anonimo Veneziano writes in Venetian vernacular, and his language is a bit different. Pastero or pastello is a pie with a thick crust, cooked aside and then filled, or wrapped around the filling, as in the case of the pie we are preparing today. The other kind of pie is called a torta, made instead with a thin crust, similar to lasagna. You find the links to a prone pastello and a few torte in the description below. We miss the ginger and onion. Usually, Anonimo Veneziano uses lots of spices, but in this case he decided to make a simple filling with just ginger. He suggests using dry ginger ground to powder, but we preferred the flavor of a fresh ginger, in any case available in Italy during the Middle Ages. The mixture of ginger and onion, cooked in this way, directly inside the pastero, will give a delicious spicy note to the filling, with an excellent aromatic complexity. We mix the meat with the onion, ginger and a couple of pinches of salt. If you're interested in knowing more about historical cooking and want to help us to make new videos, support us on Patreon, where you find new translations and articles every week, and buy our new book, Ancient Roman Cooking, available in English and Italian, both the book and printed edition, you find the links in the description below. To make the crust for two small pies, we need 350 grams of flour with a pinch of salt, one egg yolk, lard and water. The medieval Italian cookbooks provide scarce information about the methods to prepare the most common recipes. In this case, how to prepare the crust for the pastero a method so well known that the author gives it for granted. We find instead plenty of recipes in Renaissance books, in particular in Bartolomeo Scappi's work, in which this kind of pie is called a pasticcio, but it is exactly the same. There is not just one way to make the crust. The most simple method consists in kneading just flour and cool water, but Scappi describes others. One consists in mixing white flour, egg yolks, a bit of lard and a pinch of salt. For another, he recommends using butter instead, adding it a bit at a time to the dough made with flour, egg yolks, rose water, salt and warm water. The author suggests baking the pasticcio at low heat in the oven, covering it with a double layer of paper to prevent it from taking too much color. We divide the dough into two parts, then we flatten the dough with our hands, 
shape in a circle about a quarter of a finger thick. There are several methods to make a pastello. Sometimes the crust is first cooked and then stuffed with the filling. In other cases the crust is wrapped around the filling, as the one we are making today. A method suggested by Anonimo Veneziano for another recipe. The size too can be very different, depending on the kind of pastello. Some recipes call for using a whole piece of meat or a fish, or other ingredients that can be kept whole, such as a rabbit, a hare or a bird wrapped in a crust. Other kinds are made with minced fish, meat or other ingredients, but frequently a pastello is a one serving a small pie, like this one. We fill the crust with the meat and onion mixture and fold it, leaving a small hole on top. Then we brush an egg yolk on the crust. The hole is essential. Many pastelli are made in this way, all the ones described by Anonimo Veneziano, to allow adding liquids after a while to finish the cooking. Usually the cooks add ingredients such as beaten eggs, wine, vinegar or verjuice to cook well the internal part of the pie. We cook each pie for about 40 minutes. The cooking time depends on the size and thickness of the crust. If you are using enough lard, actually you can cook it for a longer time. The addition of liquids in the hole will allow a very long cooking without the risk of obtaining a dry filling. Just bake it at low heat until the crust is well cooked. Meanwhile, we mix a bit of sugar with red wine vinegar and dilute it with a little water. Sugar here is used not to make a sweet pie, but to balance the acidity of vinegar. Do not exaggerate with sugar, use just a bit. We remove the pastero from the oven and add a spoonful of the vinegar and sugar, pouring it in the hole. Then we cook it for another 10 or 15 minutes. This pastero is simple and incredibly tasty, complex with the mixture of meat, onion and ginger, and fragrant with lard. We suggest eating it as soon as you take it from the oven, because the more it's hot, the better it is. It would be interesting to try a variant of the crust using butter, following Bartolomeo Scappi's method. Surely a dish worth a try, to experience a delicious high-end cooking medieval dish that was served commonly at the banquets, made with a few ingredients and easy to prepare. If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors, subscribe our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon.